So you guys asked me a ton of questions in the comment, through email, and on Instagram and LinkedIn. And unfortunately, I cannot always get to all of them. So I thought, why not compile some of your most commonly asked questions and answer them in this one video. Win-win for everyone. All right, let's get straight to it. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. If you're new here, I'm a software engineer based in Seattle. I have about 20 years of experience in the industry where I've held diverse software engineering roles and created a few tech startups. And I'm currently at Microsoft. If you're new to this channel, my goal here is to help you get the best out of your career by mentoring you around five key pillars, technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, consider subscribing and follow me at Engineering with Utsa for behind the scenes and monthly Q&As. The first question is, I'm really bad at coding. How can I improve? Let me start right off by telling you that you are not bad at coding, regardless of how many times you've felt that way. I've been mentoring software engineers for well over a decade now, and feeling this dread of not being good enough is surprisingly quite common. But it is very rarely, if ever, due to lack of skills. It almost always stems from software engineers not fully understanding themselves and the environment they work in. Let me expand on that and hopefully that will help you change your perception of where you stand with respect to the work you do. Just because something feels difficult does not automatically mean that you're bad at it. Anything that is new is supposed to feel difficult. That is how you learn. Anything that you have not done for a long time is supposed to feel difficult. That is how you remember. This is just you stepping outside your comfort zone and real growth happens when you do that. It's normal. The only time you should be paying attention is when something you do frequently continues to feel difficult. Even then, I would not conclude that you're not good at what you're doing. It could just mean that you are focusing only on what you needed to do and if you are able to do it. See, that is an oversimplified way of looking at the problem. The missing and more important parts are why and how. Why weren't you able to do it and how can you improve in the future? This is the first step in understanding yourself and by that I mean identifying where your anxiety stems from. A gap in your skill set or a lack of common soft skills. A lack in confidence to communicate can easily cripple you in technical areas and vice versa. But it does not mean that you're necessarily bad in the technical aspects. And this perfectly leads me to the second question. The second question is, I have severe imposter syndrome. How can I break free from it? So for those that don't know, imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern where individuals doubt their accomplishments and have a persistent fear of being exposed as a fraud. Despite evident uh, success or external validations, those experiencing this syndrome often attribute their achievements to luck or timing or even external factors rather than their own skill or intelligence. First off, believe it or not, a lot of people have imposter syndrome, including me. I'm not going to try to pretend that I'm an expert in psychology and explain you why it exactly happens, but based on my experience, a lot of people who have imposter syndrome either lack one or more technical skills or, more importantly, the soft skills. And as I said in my previous answer, one can affect another. For example, I personally don't like presenting. I know it's kind of ironic for someone who runs a YouTube channel to say that, but it is what it is. And because of that, I'm never fully confident when I'm presenting. But that does not mean that I don't have the skills around the topics that I'm presenting about. It's just that being the center of attention makes me a little uncomfortable. So if you're not careful about identifying why you feel uncomfortable, you can easily think that you lack the technical skills because you get nervous every time you have to talk about your code or design, when the truth is that you probably lack the skills to present or communicate. So if you suffer from symptoms of imposter syndrome, I highly recommend reflecting on why you feel that way. Way. Note down every time you have that feeling and try to answer what specifically made you feel that way. Was it your anxiety? Did someone say anything? Were you not able to deliver something? Then identify the actual root cause behind it. If it is in fact a technical skill gap, then so be it. Work on improving it. But my guess is that it is most likely a soft skill like confidence in communication that is causing you to feel that way. Third question, what is the fastest way to get better at coding? Just like I said earlier that thinking you are bad at coding is not the right way to look at things, thinking about getting better at coding or being the best coder isn't also a very meaningful goal. What does being a great coder even mean? Writing optimal bug-free code? 
coding fast. If that's the case, I wouldn't even advise focusing too much on getting better at coding. I know this will be a slightly controversial opinion, but your peak coding days are probably when you were preparing for coding interviews. You will rarely, if ever, write code that is that optimized in the real world. You will instead focus on writing more extensible, modular, and maintainable code. So instead of thinking about getting better at coding, I suggest putting all your effort into getting better at design. Whether that is low-level design, where you design the technical workings of a specific project, or architecture design, where you are thinking about how various services and projects work together at scale. Because once that problem is solved, given the correct set of requirements, anyone can write great code, even artificial intelligence. Fourth question, I have a small startup project and our code base has a lot of code that is AI generated. While this has been immensely useful for faster code churn, we don't have enough dev resources to keep track of all the security issues and vulnerabilities in our code base. Do you have any recommendation on how to tackle this? Taking care of security is and should be a big deal, not just for smaller resource strapped startups, but also huge companies like Microsoft and Google. But as you said, with quick code churn, it can get quickly out of control, especially if you deal with a lot of nested dependencies in your library. You mentioned that you don't have enough dev resources to keep track of vulnerabilities, but even if you did, that wouldn't be a good use of your resources. See, there are generally two categories of um, security issues. Established bad patterns, like for example, code that allows SQL injection, and then there is security issues and vulnerabilities that get introduced into various libraries that you depend on. Those are generally tracked by various public databases like GitHub advisory database. Um, the best way to tackle both of these is to utilize some kind of a tool or a framework that can integrate into your code base and your CI CD pipeline. One tool I can highly recommend is SNCC who have also kindly sponsored this video. SNCC is a platform designed to help developers and teams quickly find and fix security issues in their code, open source dependencies, container images, and cloud infrastructure. Look, your team isn't the only one using AI to write code. In fact, a GitHub survey from 2023 published that 92% of developers are using AI coding tools in their work. And while AI assistants greatly improve code churn, as you mentioned, it can introduce security risks. And one of SNCC's products is exactly designed for this scenario. You use various AI tools to write your code, while SNCC makes sure that your code is secure as it is written. It instantly scans your code so you don't have to wait around for long reports. It will even open PRs for the fix so you can just merge them and move on, saving time and workload from your security team. SNCC uses a combination of symbolic and generative AI, several machine learning methods, and they have their own security researchers along with their own vulnerability database to ensure that you get a high level of accuracy. And needless to say, it works with all the major programming languages and plugs directly into your IDE. And that's just one of SNCC's offering that I think fits perfectly based on your question. They do offer a ton more to secure your code in real time, to protect your code base against vulnerabilities in open source dependencies, uh, or to fix zero day vulnerabilities, and to keep your container images safe, just to name a few. So yeah, definitely try SNCC. It's free to get started with. You can use the link in the description below. What do you think is one thing that not many software engineers do that hurts their career progression? The easy answer here for me is to probably say they're not making enough impact, not focusing on growth mindset or something along those lines. But you know, I'll be honest with you, there have been times in my career where I've done everything I needed to do and still not progress until I realized that no one is going to fight for me until I start doing that for myself. So the number one thing I think not many developers do that hurts their career is that they don't advocate for themselves. Look, in an ideal world, your manager is supposed to look after your career and your company is supposed to make sure that you're making enough progress in your career. But that's not how it always works. Your career is eventually your responsibility. And part of that responsibility is making sure that your impact and influence is visible and rewarded. Next up, is working in big tech way too hyped? The short answer, yes. I think this hype peaked during 2020, but I think it's gradually gone down since then. Big tech versus smaller companies, to be honest, they're just two different flavors and which one works better for you totally depends on you. In my personal opinion, the opportunity to grow your technical skills is generally greater at smaller tech companies, while your career trajectory, mobility, and compensation tends to be better at big tech. So eventually, like, 
anything else in software. It depends on what you want out of your career. Neither one is right or wrong, and you can always switch between the two to find out for yourself. What do you think about the FIRE movement? I'm a strong believer of being financially independent, but doing so just to retire early is in my cup of tea. For those who don't know, FIRE stands for Financially Independent Retire Early, where the idea is to work hard and make a lot of money early in your career so that you can retire early. Look, being financially independent or having financial freedom should be a top priority for everyone, regardless of whether you're into the FIRE movement or not. And the steps to get there are usually pretty straightforward. In fact, I have an entire video I made about that a few months ago so check it out if you're into it but as far as retiring goes i kind of like working even if i quit my job i wouldn't be watching tv all day and doing nothing i would still be doing something so retiring and relaxing isn't my thing but maybe retiring and running a business of my own probably is I don't know. Okay, last few questions, but let's do these rapid fire style. What are the most important soft skills for a software engineer? I would say communication, teamwork, and time management. And if you want to climb the ladder faster, leadership. What are the best ways to network in the tech community? Meetups, conferences, online communities, social media, open source communities, maybe even coding competitions, alumni networks, volunteering. But I think the best of all is happy hours. So folks, regardless of whether you are extroverted or not, whether you drink or not, try to attend every company happy hour that you can. The best conversations and networking opportunities are there. What programming language should I learn first? This question is like a plague that never leaves. And regardless of how hard I try to explain that it does not matter, no one listens. So here it is. In 2024, learn Python. It's the best of all worlds. How do I approach debugging effectively? Reproduce the issue, understand the issue, isolate the code that is causing the issue to a small snippet that you can consistently reproduce. At this point, you should either be able to find the bug or at least have a code snippet that you can present to someone who can help you find the bug. All right, folks, that's it for today. Thanks for all the questions and maybe we'll do this again in the future. Please like and subscribe if you found this video useful and let me know in the comments below if you have any more questions for me. Also check out some of these other videos that I think you might enjoy. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.